Hi everyone, Ronnie here. You're listening to Clean With Me, the podcast where I talk you through cleaning your house. Thanks for joining me in this episode. We are going to talk about cleaning a bedroom in 20 minutes. So the first thing you're going to want to do, if you're already presentable and ready to clean, is get your supplies together. You're going to need a basket, trash bag, or box to put clutter items in, things you're going to be getting rid of in some way. You're going to need your vacuum cleaner. You might put it out in the hallway or broom and dustpan if you have just a hard floor in your room. A hamper or laundry basket for dirty clothes. We're talking about a messy room here, okay? So if you're balking about that, then maybe you don't need this episode. I do have other episodes that are an hour long where we go through the entire house. Some episodes are me and some episodes are my daughter Jessica. And then when we're both in the same town, we record together. And then last but not least, a trash can or trash bag. Um, If the bag you're using for clutter items is the same color as the bag you're using for trash, I don't recommend that. Sometimes I'll have a white bag and a black bag because I typically get the white bags for the kitchen and then those larger trash bags are black. So I'll, I'll choose one for donation stuff and then the other for trash. So I'm just throwing that out there that you're going to want to put things that you're not throwing away in a different bag or container. So again, you're going to need something to put away clutter items, maybe a box or a different colored bag, a vacuum, a hamper or laundry basket, and a trash can or trash bag. So time is kind of of essence here. I realized that It could take longer than 20 minutes to fully detail a disaster bedroom, but this is just going to be a quick clean. Don't worry about unrolling dirty socks or pulling shirts right out, right side out. Those are tasks that are easier to do while you're sorting your laundry. Okay, instead, just grab all of your dirty clothes and place them in the hamper or basket. Okay, that's going to be step one, gathering up all of the dirty laundry. And this may not be just on the floor of your room. This could be items that you've draped over a chair. However, typically if I drape something over a piece of furniture, like I drape a pair of pants over the footboard of my bed, it means that the item is not dirty, but I just didn't put it away properly. So maybe you have dirty items just on the floor and the things that are draped over stuff is clean, but now is a good time to now's the time to get that laundry picked up um, off the floor. Now it could be that you have a clean pile or a clean laundry basket in your bedroom. If you're like me, I have kind of a chest for clean laundry. And I know some of you are thinking, no, 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 the laundry is supposed to go from the dryer to the place where you're going to fold it, you're going to immediately fold it, put it away. But life happens. For example, right now I have an extremely busy schedule, be gathering up dirty clothes. And then obviously if, if you're ahead of the game, you can collect any clean clothes and refold them or rehang them where they're supposed to go. Maybe those items that you hung over a piece of furniture. But right now I am working a full-time job, remote, it's fully remote, so I work from home, plus I'm a full-time student. 
I'm not saying this to brag. I'm basically admitting that I'm insane right now. <laughs> it, it It is more doable because of the fact that it's at home, but it's still a lot. But I consider myself to be on a 15-month plan. I'm hoping to finally complete my bachelor's 15 months from now. And I am pursuing a bachelor's degree in English and writing. I already have my associate's degree in interdisciplinary studies, which just means I took classes in a variety of subjects and wanted to apply all the credits I already had to that degree. But I am a professional content writer. And if you don't know what that is, it means that I write articles for businesses to improve their search engine optimization, SEO. And yeah, so that's that's what I do. Um, I'm really enjoying my new job. One of the ways I'm able to kind of survive this, my, my kid's school is very close to my house and my teenage son just got his driver's license. So now I can even send him to the store for milk or this morning he took, he took his siblings to school. So yeah, that, that's been a lifesaver. And of course he's happy to do it because he's excited to be out driving. Nerve wracking for me, but exciting for him and convenient for me. So maybe you can relate to that or maybe you're in a different season of life. Anyway, um, let's see. Let's talk about your clean clothes as you're sorting through the clothing in your room. You're going to pick up any clean clothes and refold them. I think I kind of got sidetracked earlier, but I was saying if you have like a bin for clean laundry or a clean laundry pile, it's essential that you keep up on putting your dirty laundry in the hamper and not letting your clean laundry get to be so out of hand that it's overflowing because then the dreaded clean laundry being mixed with dirty. You don't want to wonder what's dirty, what's clean. Um, You don't want your dog to be laying on clean laundry or something because it's spilling out of the clean laundry basket. So just throwing that out there as a possible source of motivation for you, a reason to to pick up. Um, Any clean clothes lying around waiting to be folded and hung now's the time now I'm not talking about tackling that laundry pile or that laundry basket I'm talking about items that are completely out of place like something you draped over a chair or something like that or or maybe just left in the bottom of your closet because you changed your mind on what you were wearing do you ever get ready to go somewhere I think every woman does this for sure you get ready to go somewhere and for some reason like you're nervous about the event or something and just nothing looks right so you change your clothes three or four times but you're in a hurry so you leave everything in in the floor of your closet anyway um lately I haven't had that happen as often because I've decluttered my wardrobe So I like what I have, and I know that when I reach for certain items that they are among my favorites because I only have favorites. Years ago, when my husband and I first got married, I'm not even sure how this came up, but he has his little sayings, and he hasn't said this in years, but it kind of stuck with me. He goes, around here, we only do favorites. Like, I said something, well, it's okay, but it's not really my favorite. (laughs) And I mean, it's so true. Like, once you're an adult, like, you eat a lot of your favorite foods because you're not at someone else's mercy on what you're going to eat. Now, obviously, you know, balance and nutrition and all that, you know, I'm not saying to live on ice cream, but, you know, you, you pick your favorite meat, your favorite vegetable, what have you. Anyway, if you were 
Let's say that your room is fairly clean and your biggest problem is the clean laundry basket. You could sit down and fold fold that laundry. Um, the way I do that is I make my bed first and then I fold clothes and put the folded piles on my bed and then if there's something that needs to be hung up I drape it over the footboard of my bed rather than take the time to fold something I'm just gonna hang up obviously so maybe that's you or maybe you're just picking up items that are misplaced it kinda depends what you have time for we're pacing ourselves because we are about 11 months we're about 11 minutes in to a 20 minute cleaning session so hopefully by now all of your stray clothing has been put away either in the hamper or in the clean laundry basket or in the drawers or hanging up but your room is free of random clothing lying around um, next you're going to throw away any trash. This is not the time to decide whether you're going to declutter certain items or, you know, start sorting through your clothing or anything like that. We're talking about obvious trash. Maybe you have some empty water bottles on the nightstand or if you're like me, sometimes your dog takes trash under the bed to like hide and chew on it. Or you just, you have kids that are dropping things behind the headboard leading to clutter under your bed. If there's a lot of clutter under your bed as far as trash and whatnot and you have a king size bed and you can't reach everything king or queen maybe grab like a broom and start dragging stuff out with the broom that's what I have to do when dogs take stuff under my bed to chew it up but I don't want to get get sidetracked on that you may not even have a dog or your dog may not have that irritating habit I feel like one of my dogs sneaks things out of the trash, takes them under the bed. But anyway, throw away any obvious trash in your room. You could have a stack of mail that is mostly trash if you keep your mail. I tend to do a lot in my room and I do have my bills in there. But before they go into the bill drawer or the bill basket, um... I tend to have just a stack that I'm waiting to deal with. So sometimes it's easy to just go through that stack and pull out the junk mail or the bills that you don't need extra copies of and just, you know, tear them in half and throw them away. I like to tear a bill in half before throwing it away. That way I can look over at that pile and see like every envelope in this pile has been ripped in half. So I'm not paranoid about throwing away some important piece of mail because I've already looked at it, torn it in half, or it can go right into the trash bag, um, recycle bag, whatever. Um, let's see, throwing away junk mail. Oh, a thought on mail. The exception to the rule is I try to always keep my most recent utility bills because it seems like somebody's always like requiring a recent utility bill for proof of residence or something. I don't know. It happens. So if you worry about that like I do, maybe don't throw those away. But most of your other bills you can toss. And it's also a good idea to go paperless on a lot of your bills. I, I definitely do that. Like I have an app for my credit cards, so there's no need for me to get a paper credit card bill. I'm never asked to show that to anyone, so I don't need it, and I don't open the ones that come in the mail. So some of them are paperless. Some of them I need to make sure I go paperless on. So that's definitely a way to reduce clutter. Okay, we are about 15 minutes in to a 20-minute room clean. 
So hopefully by now you've dealt with the clothing and the trash. If you have not already done so, now's the time to make the bed. And sometimes it's a good idea to make the bed at the very beginning because it kind of sets, sets the stage. It makes your room look good right away. And it, I don't know, just kind of starts a snowball effect that gets your room clean somehow. You know, especially if you if you have a new comforter that you really love, it makes you feel good about your room to have that comforter smoothed out and your pillows arranged. And I really like my comforter. However, the way I have it in my notes, we were starting with laundry and trash, which, you know, that's always a good idea too. And it only takes a minute to make your bed. So just a thought. If making your bed first, first motivates you, then maybe do it that way in the future. It should only take a few minutes to make your bed. Um, I don't know. This is one way that I kind of keep things simple with that. I have the type of comforter where there is a satin liner. So it's designed to go against your body and just be washed off. And that's kind of what I do in lieu of a top sheet. Some people don't, some people are old fashioned and they want to have the top and bottom sheet, but I've just found that it's a lot quicker to make the bed that way. And so, yeah, that, that's kind of what we do. And then when I got this comforter, I got it because the one I had before I got this one was too bulky and it has to go to the laundromat. And I'm like, I don't have time in my life right now. You know, it was something my husband got. And, oh, you just take it to the laundromat like it's no big deal. Well, right now, that is a big deal for me, and I'm not going to do it. It's very time-consuming. So I got one that is thin enough that it can easily be washed in my washing machine on a regular basis. So um, kind of my plan is to, when the weather gets colder, just fold a winter blanket, a warm blanket, and along to put along the bottom of the bed and then if we you know it looks kind of decorative that way when you've got that blanket down at the foot of your bed the folded blanket and then if it gets cold we could just pull that over the comforter and have that on the top to add another layer but who am I kidding we usually adjust the thermostat <laughs> to where we don't we won't need that blanket but just throwing that out there. It's very quick to make a bed that has either a washable comforter or like a duvet cover, something like that. By now you've made your bed. It doesn't take that long. Now you're going to pick up any random items that don't belong in your bedroom and put them into a basket, a box, or a bag. You're not going to leave the room to take them back to their res- respective homes around the house one by one you're you're just going to put everything in one location for now whether that's a laundry basket a box or a bag maybe you have a donation bag but you also just want to relocate some stuff even just making a pile by the doorway of your room right now would be fine just things that need to be redistributed around the house. Now's the time to get those items together. For example, something that doesn't that belongs to a different member of your family who does not live in your bedroom. My kids tend to bring things into my room and yeah, they need to be removed again. I always say my car is not a storage unit for random stuff. Well, neither is my bedroom. So maybe you need to make a pile. Maybe you need to put some things in a donate bag. I'm not talking about making those hard decisions about things you're not sure if you want to get rid of. I have other episodes just about decluttering. That's not the focus of this episode. But maybe there's just something that you've been meaning to take out of circulation. And you're like, I'm planning to donate that. Put it in the donate bag. 
We might have kind of an accumulation of clutter on surfaces like your dresser, your nightstand, or possibly a TV stand if you don't have a wall mount. I have actually, we have a big TV, but it's sitting on a dresser. We have two dressers. We have a tall chest of drawers, and then we have like a low dresser that we use as a TV stand. Um, so those are areas that I would declutter. There's not a lot of decluttering to do on my chest of drawers because I have a printer up there that takes up almost the whole top of it. And things usually tend to get removed from the dresser that's a TV stand. Otherwise, they kind of block the TV. <laughs> okay. And that, but the nightstands, though, my husband and I each have a nightstand and both of them accumulate clutter. So let's get all that stuff and get it dealt with. Maybe there are items on your nightstand that need to be taken to the kitchen and they need to go to that redistribution pile. You know, forgotten coffee mug from this morning or worse, random bowl that with ice cream residue from last night. Who knows? But we are running out of time. Let's get rid of all that clutter. And we're not moving furniture to sweep or vacuum. You're just going to do a quick run through after this episode um, with the vacuum cleaner. Okay, I'm not expecting you to vacuum while you listen, but once you've cleared all of the surfaces, your dressers, your nightstands, and whatnot, it's time to dust those off. Just grab something close to you and give those surfaces a swipe, or if you have time, grab some cleaning wipes, or if you have fancy wooden furniture, maybe you need to use a dusting spray, maybe you need to use a dry feather duster, but let's just give those surfaces a swipe to remove any surface dust. And like I said, after the episode, you're going to maybe put on your favorite song and vacuum the room. You can probably do it in one song. Um, I didn't really address the master bathroom or whatever because this is only a short episode. So put away any supplies. It's it's recovery time now. That means you're not going to leave a mess from the cleaning. So you're going to want to put away your supplies. Maybe there's a trash bag that you need to take outside. Maybe there is a donation bag that you need to put out in the trunk of your car. Maybe you need to redistribute some items. Grab that redistribution basket or start grabbing things from that pile and taking them where they need to go. Dishes to the kitchen, kid stuff to a kid room if you have kids. Just remember a bedroom is, bedroom should be a sanctuary a place where you relax at the end of the day. And unfortunately, our bedrooms can quickly turn into storage areas where we kind of just stash things so that visitors don't see them and so that the, the front areas of our house stay clean. But sometimes you've got to just focus on the bedroom for an entire 20 minute episode and that's what we did today hopefully you got a lot done special thanks to our financial supporters on patreon there is a link in the show description but most of all thank you so much for listening don't forget to follow us on social media there's a facebook page clean with me podcast Look it up. Send us a private message. We love getting feedback. And also special thanks to everyone who has left a positive review on Apple Podcast or whichever app you listen on. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate each and every one of you. And as always, happy cleaning. I'll talk to you in the next episode.